Stanford University. So indeed, my name is Jennifer Ocker. I'm a professor at the Stanford Graduate School of Business. And my name is Nathan Waterhouse. I work at a company called IDEO, a design company, and I lead our Open Innovation Initiative. We wanted to tell you a love story, uh, and it begins in the following way, with a cheek swab. A cotton swab, Q-tip itself makes 25 billion of them each year. It's an ordinary, simple thing, but for some of us, it represents life. This is Smear. Smear, Stanford undergraduate here, and um, a social entrepreneur at heart. He founded Dosti, a project that lives in the Haas Center here. Um, after he graduated, he went on to create many startups, and he fell in love with a girl named Reina, and they married, and they were in India, traveling when he felt hot, feverish, and sweaty, and they went to the hospital, and he was diagnosed with leukemia. That was four years, two days ago today. And he called his best friend, Robert Chotwani, who was my student, and he told him the news, and Robert was shocked. He put himself to work, starting to understand what the problem was, and he learned that worldwide, there's 10,000 cases of bone marrow, bone or blood cancers diagnosed each year, and the most effective way to address this is through bone marrow transfers. Now, for most of us, we'll be able to find such a match in our family, but for 70% of people that are diagnosed with this cancer, they have to go to strangers, strangers that are banked in the bone marrow registry. If you're Caucasian, the chances of finding a match are 80%, but if you are South Asian, the chances are 1 in 20,000. And the same is the case for most minority groups. Samir did not find a match in the registry, and so the question was, how can we address this challenge? Well, in order to find a match, all you need to do is take one cheek swab, swab it in your cheek, mail it into the bone marrow registry, simple Netflix type of model, and then do that 20,000 times. The problem is Samir only had weeks. So, the challenge. Samir's friends and family got together. Robert har harnessed all of the network, and they acted quickly, and they needed to design for scale. So what they did was the following. Robert took three hours, and he crafted an email, and that email was so beautiful. It told the story so well of Samir and his life and who he was that even if you didn't know Samir and you got this email, you would feel like you knew him. And at the end of the email, the call to action was so abundantly clear. Go to a bone marrow drive or just go onto the Be The Match website and request a cheek swab. And then tell 10 friends to do that and tell them to tell 10 friends. Incredibly simple. Then they harnessed social media and they took Facebook and LinkedIn and Google and YouTube and they shared that message and amplified their story. And the result in 11 weeks was 470 bone marrow drives, 24,611 South Asians banked, and a perfect match was found for Samir. Whenever I tell this story, I feel so much hope at this moment. <sighs> Samir blogged from the hospital and he shared his story because he felt connected to 24,611 people that he didn't even know. And he talked about how much he appreciated life and he even called on his friends to bank another 25,000 people in the registry because he knew of four other people who were searching at the same time as him. And he appreciated everything he was given. He even put his bone marrow transfer onto YouTube so people could see that the process is not nearly as scary or daunting as you think. It can be merely a three-hour procedure similar to a blood transfer. And the lessons they learned were fundamental and simple and yet powerful. The importance of a clear, single, focused goal an idea of getting 20,000 South Asians in weeks started with this idea of identifying about 500 highly influential Indians and then sharing the message with them so they could share it to their network. Grabbing attention and making people look, engaging and telling a story in a way that makes you step closer, and then maybe most importantly, arming others so that they could act because Robert and his friends couldn't do this on their own. An update on Samir. He um, passed on 
three months after the transfer. As many of you know, the chance of finding a match and it working is not just about the quality of the match, but how quickly you can get it. And this is Samir and Reina two days before he passed on. But the reason Nathan and I are here talking about this is that out of the 24,611 people that were banked because of Samir, 266 people were matched just in one year alone. And if you can get a perfect match immediately, the odds move from 40% to 80% survival. So that's 266 people that don't just have the gift of hope, but they have the actual gift of time. And the question is, could we, could we together, right here, right now, think about honoring someone as special and wonderful as Sumer, and take his legacy and try and bank 25,000, and in fact, double it and create 100,000 eventually with the core group of 25,000, what would that look like if we could get 100,000 people on the registry this year? And could we design for network effects so that others could take on this message, inviting others to participate? But how could we do that? If you start with a single small email with a story well told and a clear call to action, which is what the Haas Center did, the question is, would anyone respond? And the answer to this email was a resounding yes. And they're right back there, right here, right now. And they said, we want to take on this goal for this year. And they call themselves 100,000 Cheeks. The question is how? Here at Stanford, we believe deeply in design thinking as a way of solving world challenges. And we find that when you take these types of approaches, that more innovative, creative, and often more effective solutions come out of that process. And if we could engage a discrete network with distinct skills, we also know from network theory that tipping points are more likely because if you tap those discrete networks, social change is more likely. And that's how they got to know Nathan. Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> Open IDEO is an online platform that engages a creative and passionate uh, network to engage in helping us solve challenges of a social and environmental nature. So far over the last nine months, we've tackled a range of challenges, everything from helping kids eat more healthily with Jamie Oliver to in trying to improve maternal health in low-income countries uh, with Oxfam and Nokia. Our challenge this time was how could we bank another 100,000 cheeks into the bone marrow registry? The approach we took was starting with a clear call to arms. The challenge question, how might we increase the number of registered bone marrow donors to help save more lives? The way Open Idea works is we walk through key phases of the innovation process over a series of weeks. We start with the inspiration phase. This is all about learning about the problem before we jump to ideas. It's about trying to understand what's already been tried and using that global network to figure out what's already been tried in different countries around the world and where best to innovate. Next comes the concepting phase. And this is really where you share your idea as visual as possible and get feedback early on it so that you can iterate and improve it. You can also build on the ideas of others, which makes it a little bit less daunting. Next phase is evaluation. This is about equipping the community with the right criteria to help us make decisions around which ideas to move forwards and which might really make a big dent in cancer. And then finally, realization is about bringing those ideas to life. So how did the challenge go? Well, we got an amazing response from our community. And I'd like to give you a taste of some of the things that came out of the challenge. As I said, the first phase is about learning about the problem. We call it inspiration. Here's an example, something that Vinit Singhal shared, one of the leaders of the 100K Cheeks here at Stanford. He helped the community to understand that 80% of the time, donating bone marrow is actually a painless procedure. It only takes three hours, and it's pretty much just, a, bone, it's just a, a blood transfusion. That really helped to debunk some of the myths that the community had around bone marrow donation, and really helped them to focus on the creative aspect of trying to solve this problem. Thanks to inspirations like these and hundreds of others, we learned a great deal about this problem such as 
There are barriers to bone marrow donation, such as the irrational fear of needles and the misunderstanding of this process in general. We learned that it's actually a journey. It's not uh, just a one-off process like donating blood. And it starts by becoming aware and of understanding the need for this important contribution. We also found five key ways to innovate in this space. One of the unique things about the platform is it encourages collaboration amongst the community. It's not just about the final person or people that actually created the winning solutions, but everybody that helped us get there. So we're going to take one of these themes, make it easy, which is all about really just trying to make it every day. What if we could make donating bone marrow and registering in the bone marrow donating something that's just every day and simple? Gina shared with the community and built off this make it easy theme the fact that um, the eligible age for donating bone marrow is between 18 and 60. Kate was inspired by this fact and suggested that perhaps the DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles, could be involved somehow. Vincent built off this with his idea of swabbing your cheek whilst you're waiting in line at the DMV. And here's his concept. I'm going to share with you a few more of the final concepts, and you can find out more about these after this talk. Could we create a mobile application that would help groups to organize bone marrow drives with their own networks? Could we provide people with the right tools so that they can create their own grassroots movement and make a real impact in this area? Could we create swab parties where friends get together learn about bone marrow donation, and swab their cheek at the same time? Or, and this is the final concept I'm going to share with you, could we create an international website that contains your local donor center information and information about um, drives that might be happening in the next few days, wherever you are in the world, so that we can really make a global impact in this problem of bone marrow donation? It's only been a couple of weeks since the challenge finished, but already we're starting to see some of these ideas, most of them in fact, get taken up by different groups. I'd like to hand back over to Jennifer to talk through some of the things that we've learned along this process. Thank you. So, what did we learn? First of all, everything about Samir in this story just is almost spiritual. There's so many coincidences that have come along the line. Um, so if anyone's interested in this, please just reach out to either one of us uh, and we'll tell you more. But the learnings from this process were powerful, designed for others. There's research to show that when you solve problems of others and not yourself, you're more likely to think clearly, creatively, innovatively, and the outcomes are often more impactful um, for many, many reasons. We've had the opportunity to design for others for so long, but with the net, with social media, the opportunity for such global leverage has never been existent. The second is this idea of creating just enough. What the students and Open IDEO created was not 100% perfect. It was 80% perfect, but it was just enough. And when you engage in a community and you create something that's perfect, they look at it like an art gallery and they don't see themselves in it. But if you create something that's 80% good and then hand it to them, they can see themselves in it. And what's needed in that project as much as what's strong in that project resonates with them. So what can you create that is just enough? And this idea of cultivating optimism, cultures of optimism, persistent optimism, garner ideas, and ideas become infectious in those contexts. Can we tackle some of the world problems, but concurrently develop a culture of optimism? And finally, how do we design for networks, preferably discrete networks, with discrete skill sets? And if you think of that single email that Robert sent, it took him three hours, and it hit a network, and that network flourished, and it led to a book called The Dragonfly Effect, which, again, hit a network, and that flourished. And then there's a set of students right there, right now, 100,000 cheeks, and they have their network. And that eventually led to Open IDEO engaging with this project, and that has its own discrete network. And if you look at what has happened just in the last six months from this simple story, over a million people have been touched, and each one of those people have their own networks with Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter. And if you think of yourself right here, right now, and even if you just think of three networks that you possess, 
And if you could just share this simple story, and we'll tweet it out and email it to you with those three networks, and you ask them to do the same, and they share the same pattern, just imagine what we're able to do in terms of touching the 10,000 people who are dealing with this challenge right here, right now. I hope you no longer think of this as an ordinary, mundane thing, but as a something that's sacred. And we hope that you're thinking right now, could we do one small thing, like swab our cheek, which we invite you to do out there, along with enjoying open IDO ideas, in order to potentially be a perfect match for someone else and create another love story. Thank you. Thanks. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.